right guys, it's the video a lot of you guys have been waiting for. We're going to go ahead and do the review on the Honda HRX 217 VKA. And we're not just going to do it by uh, a wing and a prayer here. We're going to take it right down Honda's website. Item by item for each of the features that they're trying to sell you on, we're going to talk about each one. And I'm going to let you know what I found by using this mower for about a month in my side hustle business. Features like the select drive, the four in one Versamo clip director, micro cut twin blade system, the rust free neck sight deck with the lifetime warranty, the 190 engine, which is actually 186 cc's high torque, the warranty, the large bag, the rear discharge option. The quick release adjustable handle, ball bearing wheels, seven position cut height, the manual fuel shutoff. Now a lot of these items we've already discussed in a video uh, that is uh, a full demonstration video, very in-depth demonstration video where we go pass for pass and we take each of these little items apart. Uh, piece by piece like you know not a part apart like physically but we talk about it we really break it down so there's an awesome demo video you guys should check out and I'll go ahead and link to that up here and I'll put it in the video description below it's the Honda demo video of this mower and also real important is I did a maintenance video on this mower as part of this review and I posted that a couple weeks ago we change the oil, we take the blades apart, we look this thing over, up and down, we talk about a lot of things about this machine, your common maintenance that needs to be done, even adjusting the select drive cable to keep proper tension on your transmission. We follow the checklist in the manual that Honda provided with the mower and we went through it so you know what to expect. If you purchase this mower, what is the maintenance steps going to be? Okay. This mower MSRP, the manufacturer's suggested retail, retail price is $6.99 on the website. You'll find them locally at your retail stores, like your Honda retail stores, about $649. I was lucky and I had a $100 off uh, sale when I bought this. I got this mower for $549 plus tax. I was very fortunate. Um, but you can look to spend anywhere between $650 to $700 for this mower plus your applicable taxes and stuff like that. So uh, it's not cheap and that's why I want to do a very detailed in-depth review of this mower following the website checklist and we go over it piece by piece. So what do you say we get started? Alright so as part of this review, if you're doing a side hustle and you got to get this thing in and out of your truck, Or the trunk of your car it's not the lightest thing in the world it's 89 pounds dry so when you put in a whatever half a gallon of fuel a little bit of oil it gets a little bit heavy as a side hustle I would say get yourself some little ramps if you got a weak back a hurt back or if you got issues okay all right sorry about the background noise the uh, neighbors are cutting grass too so hey it's Saturday middle of June it's raining every day, so we got to get it done in the morning. Uh, but we're going to talk about the Honda Select Drive uh, real quick and what this thing's all about. What happens is it's belt driven, and you can check that out in the maintenance video that I put up. Uh, it goes over all that. But this, you dial this here, and if you can see, it pulls the handle back. The more the handle's back, the more tension it puts on the drive belt for um, turning the transmission. Less slip on the belt, more power to the transmission. As you go like this, it gives you less, the belt slipping a little bit more and more and more and more. Okay, it's not like geared or anything like that. It goes, it has to do with slippage. So, if you have it on minimum, you got very little um, pressure on the belt. So there's some slipping going on. The weight of the machine, the height of the grass, the drag and everything plays in. And what it'll do is, you know, try to pick a speed for you based on the slippage. The more that you dial this in, the less slippage, the more consistent. I don't like this variable speed, they call it infinite variable speed from zero to four miles per hour. I don't like it because when you're down here at a slower speed, um, not trying to go breakneck fast as you're cutting, 
the drag on the machine, the height of the grass, transitioning from sidewalk to grass, from tall grass to, to low grass, changes the speed of the mower. So you're constantly finding yourself being variable, not necessarily the machine. The machine is reacting to the amount of drag that's on it um, based on the slippage of the belt. So you got to find a sweet spot to where if you get onto something with no drag, it doesn't pull you and take off on you all of a sudden where you got to like jump up and speed up and that's what happens. So you got to find that right speed. It's not thrilling. I don't, I don't think that's great. It's kind of annoying. But you should expect that if your machine's doing that, it's not bad. It's not a bad machine. Your belt is fine. It has to do with slippage. It has to do with the, the drag that's on the mower because of the height of the grass, the softness of the turf, just the overall drag. Um, I hope that makes sense to you. You get used to it. The first time I used it, I thought there was something wrong. I did a maintenance video and I made sure that the cable was adjusted properly, putting proper tension on the belt, and it is. Um, it, that's just the way it is. So when it has to do with the select drive, not thrilled about it. I don't think it's great. It's not broke. It's just the way it is. It's not a deal breaker. But I do like the fact that you do have different speeds that you can use it, whereas most mowers are fixed. Um, a fixed speed. So I do like that. That's pretty neat. All right. According to the Pennington.com grass chart for your proper grass cutting height, centipede grass should be cut to uh, around two, what was it, uh, like inch and a half to, to, to three inches, two and a half inches, something like that. But customers, most of your customers are going to want a little bit on the lower side than the tall side. So to please my customer, I'm going to put it at two and a half inches front and back and uh, take it from there. I want to show you guys a key point about this setup that I really like. I think they call it like ergonomic grips or something like that. I call it hand friendly. When you have your hands like this and you're holding this with your thumb, that applies your transmission, okay? Pulls your belt tight, whatever, however you want to say it. Um, and the more that you have this out, the more tension on the belt, like I said. The thing with this is when you get to a point where you got to turn, you can just turn and never, never let go of the butterfly grip, okay? Which means you can effortlessly continue mowing around a corner, around a tree, around everything. You don't have to pull a lever back. So, if you're, try to keep this in frame, if you're like this, and you just made your turn and you're about to go this way, you don't have to push a lever back, you don't have to push a bar back, and, and try to get the mower to go forward, okay? You're holding this, of course, because that's your, your operator presence, that kills the motor. Um, but you're like this, you made your turn, you can grab it and pull the mower and help the mower go, and fall in right behind the mower and walk. So I want you to watch that for a few minutes as part of this review. Watch the effortless, effortless way I can flip the mower around and hopefully you guys will get something out of that, positive or negative, for your likes. See how that works? Effortless. Smooth transitions. Smooth transitions in the turns. Nice and easy. Mower keeps going. Hands stay on it. Positive control. That takes fatigue away from the operator. So as a side hustle or as just a homeowner, it's always nice if you could just keep whipping through and not stop, start, stop, start. That's going to tire you out. It has been a month since we cut this backyard. And so this is really a good opportunity for me to show you all about this Versa mode, the select most uh, clip selector right here. And how you can use this to help get through a mess like this. 
I mean, we're taking literally eight to nine inches off of this centipede grass and we're bringing it down to two and a half inches. All right, in one pass. So in one pass on full mulch, it's leaving some clippings. All right, that's full mulch. If I open the select lever, And you see full mulch means the door in there is closed. If I open the select lever to full bag, the door in there is open. Well, hold on, it moved the grass, hang on. All right, you see the door in there is open and now you see through to the lawn where the blade is. What this allows you to do is find a happy medium to where you can mulch and instead of it depositing the clippings because it's just too much, I mean, I don't care what mower you have, a 21, 22, 20, it doesn't matter. You're not gonna cut down eight to nine inch grass. I mean, this is mid-calf. Right here, mid-calf. You're not gonna cut, you're not gonna cut this grass down in one pass mulching and have it look perfect it's just not going to happen so the honda gives you an option called the clip director okay so like i said you can open the door all the way so it will blow out into a bag or into the rear discharge that we'll talk about later or you can get selective right in the middle now the door inside the deck is half open, half closed. So some of the clippings are gonna get recycled around and left on the grass, but then some of the clippings are gonna blow through into your bag attachment or the rear discharge. We'll go ahead and put it in the bag because I'm not ready to do the rear discharge and I want you guys to see this nice cut, and it's a nice cut. And we took it down in one pass. So I'm going to continue, show you one pass, full mulch, so you can hear the mower and the motor and all that, and then we'll put it on half and half, and we'll bag it, and you can see the difference in what happens. It's super thick grass. You've got to figure out a way to get through it. Sometimes you got to bag, sometimes you got to rake, sometimes you got to pay the neighborhood kid, and you run away. select the lever from full mulch to one, two, three, on number four out of ten. So some of the clippings will go into the bag. And the bag just rests right here on these hooks. Now let's see if there's a difference in performance and overall cut. Okay, no edits, not stopping the film. I want you guys to see this with the sun shade, you know, the sun shading the clippings and the difference between mulching and then having that select option. Here's what we just did and look how clean it is. Here's what we were doing and look at the clippings. And there's a couple stragglers too. But I mean, look at this. Look how clean this cut is. Look at the difference in height. 
That's a foot. We're taking off. That's a foot down there. And with the bag, it's able to go right through it. And then that's without. So, for the, that select clip, select adjuster thingy, clip director, guys, that is phenomenal. Um, and I don't think that's available on the commercial mowers, which is a shame. So, I mean, this mower is half the price of the Honda commercial mowers, and it's got that clip selector. And look at what it can do for you as a side hustle. Definitely thumbs up on, the, on that clip selector. guys so one reason why you guys like my channel is because I'm awesome I'm not gonna lie I know this and what makes me awesome is I go above and beyond when you look at all these clippings on the ground now I'm not just gonna tell you you know hey it really sucked it sucked that it mulched and it left those clippings that's gonna happen with any mower when you're cutting grass that high but I'm gonna give you a pro tip now and that's what makes me awesome I have an empty bag and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go back over these clippings. I'm gonna raise the front of the mower up one click to raise the front up to draw air in to vacuum up these clippings and put them into that bag. And I'm gonna do it with the door about half open. So it does some mulching and it does some vacuuming. And we're gonna clean up this area here that was originally only mulched. Look at the difference to where we mulched and bagged. Awesome. Brown spots, a lot of rain some weeds and I'm cutting too low for the height of the grass but this is what the customer likes that's what she's getting so here we're gonna go ahead and whip over this real fast to vacuum it up go ahead and watch this pro tip from Dan Alright, so now we're going to talk about this, uh, this micro cut blade action they got going on and the deck a little bit. Uh, the deck is a composite material. Um, a lot of people have a problem with it. They don't trust it. They say, ah, I'm not going to have a, oh, watch the sun, sorry. I'm not going to have a plastic deck, blah, 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 blah. It's got a lifetime warranty on it and I can't find anything saying that these decks have broke, cracked, or got anybody hurt or damaged property. Um, so, uh, and one of the references I made to the person that had a comment was the horse and buggy driver had a problem with cars and look where that ended up. So, you know, don't be afraid of technology. This deck has a lifetime warranty and it seems to be pretty damn strong. It'll never rust, it'll never corrode, and it won't dent. So that's really kind of cool. Um, but let's talk about these blades. As you see, it's got four cutting surfaces. One, two, and then on the other side, three and four. So it's designed to give you very small micro cut clippings. What that's gonna do, it's gonna help break down your grass a little bit quicker, your clippings quicker, and turn it back into food for your lawn. Um, long blades of grass are gonna be brown and unsightly. Small blades of grass are gonna fall in between your grass blades. They're gonna decompose faster. They're gonna feed your lawn better, and it's not going to block the soil from different things you know air water stuff like that that the roots need to get um, the grass needs to get and again the smaller the clippings you know the faster that it can make the clipping smaller then the more the motor is going to continue to power through uh, your lawn so you're supposed to be taking off no more than about an inch at a time 
when you're mowing with these mowers, and that's about true for any mower, and they always say use the two or the one third rule. So you don't want to cut more than a third of the blade of grass off. So if you got six inch grass right now, you don't want to go shorter than four inches, which is two inches. And two inches of thick grass, cutting two inches off of thick grass can be a little bit of a struggle for you and your machine. So keep that in mind. Honda recommends no more than one inch. And if you're cutting it and it's leaving some stragglers, which some people do say that the Honda mower leaves stragglers. When I looked into that, Honda says, Make sure you're not cutting more than one inch off the blade of grass and slow your speed. And if that still doesn't work, then you got an issue. Make sure that you're not cutting too fast. Make sure you're not cutting too low. Sometimes you have to double cut. That's just, you know, the cost of business of mowing lawns, especially if it's damp or if it's thick. Not even necessarily tall. It could just be really thick, healthy grass. The blades of grass are full of water and as you're cutting it, it's clumping up or it's you know it's causing an issue and you might get some stragglers so pay attention to that don't let it get you down if you have some stragglers um, don't necessarily blame it on the mower all right slow your roll raise your cut make sure you're not taking off more than an inch recommended by Honda if you can't survive with that don't buy a Honda okay so that's that's part of my review I don't have a problem with it you just saw what I just did I just took down 12 inches off of grass and I showed you how to do it using the select knob. So, pro tip, I help you out. I'm not just going to give you a review and say, ah, oh, Honda can't mow like some of these people try to come on my channel and, and you would think, you would think like Honda put their mom and dad out of business or something. Honda can mow just fine. You just have to know how to do it. So you just saw me go through 12 inch grass and you saw me do it pretty much relatively with ease. Uh, so, now what we're going to do is we're going to keep the mower at the two and a half inch height because that's the recommended height according to Pennington for centipede grass and also this customer likes their grass lower than tall so we'll keep it lower and this grass is about two weeks old so we should be able to go right through it mulching no bagging no rear discharging we're going to use the micro cut blades and we're just going to go ahead and show what it can do. It's doing a pretty good job this is a mix of centipede and some weeds some crabgrass in there but looks like it's doing a pretty good job and you see the clippings are small so that uh that really does make a difference so let's just go ahead and mow let you guys just watch the machine real quick paying attention to the height of the grass the height of the cut and just watch the operator, watch how I'm either working the machine or it's working me. But this would be you if you bought it. So, sorry, I wish you could be better looking.
micro blade technology. Oops, it's a little windy out. It's really doing a nice job. Nice cut. Two and a half inches centipede grass. Nice cut. Okay, so when I purchased my mower, I had an option to put it in the business name of Trimmers or put it in my own name. Uh, and I had them put it in my own name, which then gives me a five-year warranty, I believe it was. Yeah, five-year warranty on the machine. And um, I think it's five years on the website. Now I don't remember. Pretty sure it was five-year warranty on the machine. Could be three um, as a residential you know, owner. Now, so you go in, and what that means is you go to the shop you bought it from, and it's in the computer under your name. There's no question. They're not going to question. They don't care. So you bring it in, you have issues with the machine, and they fix it. And you got that nice long warranty. Now, that warranty is not going to do things like worn out wheels, belts, blades, bent blades, and stuff like that. That's all operator level stuff that, you know, you need to replace your wheels as you wear them out, you need to replace your blade belt. Um, for your transmission as it gets loose your blades if you bend your blade that means you hit something so all that stuff is on you the consumer uh, but you know the motor blowing up the transmission falling apart uh, the deck has a lifetime warranty on it so things like that go bad you got that warranty that you fall back on on a commercial side they only give you I think 90 days so screw that if you're gonna buy this mower make sure you buy this mower and put it in your personal name if you have an LLC um, or you know a sole proprietorship it don't matter if you have a um, if you're incorporated and you put it in your personal name you might have some issues with your you know the percentage of depreciation and stuff like that that you can claim on your taxes but I'll tell you what I would just do it in my own name <laughs> and have that nice long warranty. All right, lifetime warranty on the deck, and it was either three years or five years on the machine. Um, I wanna say it was five years, which is pretty freaking outstanding. Uh, all right, so we'll talk about these micro cut blades real fast. So you see the plus of that is it really does a nice job. It, it mows it nice. If you're cutting the proper height and you're taking the proper height off of the lawn, it does a very good job. It goes right through it. It cuts it into really fine pieces. You don't really have a trail left at all. Um, nothing more than any other mower I've ever seen um, and and you see that it, it did a really good job with that 12 inch crap back there that you know we we're taking 12 inches off did a really good job what's the downside of that well you got four well you got two blades to buy and I linked to them in the description below this video in the featured items and so it's gonna cost you like 30 something dollars for a set of blades in comparison to like 20 bucks for a single blade for like a regular mower that doesn't have this so that's just something to think about. I mean, it's a little bit of an expense, uh, but if you sharpen your own blades, it's not a big deal. If you don't sharpen your own blades and you bring it to a shop and they do it, then it might be 10 bucks instead of five bucks to sharpen a blade, I don't know. So that could be the downside, uh, but I don't have a problem with that. Again, nothing is, is stopping my show with this mower so far. Uh, the transmission, the drive system with the butterfly and the select knob, the the um, select, select a mow, versa mow with, with you know mulching or bagging or both and um, the, the blades and the warranty it's pretty hot out I mean we're around 90 degrees right now it's it's about noon we got a couple done we got some more to go and we're gonna keep working through our checklist and I got enough Sun on my sleeve on my shoulders and stuff so let's go ahead and uh, put on a regular shirt and put on my big brim hat to protect myself from the Sun and we'll move on to the next yard and continue with our review Okay, they talk about the quick release um, handle that comes on this mower. So that's really cool if you're tall or short or average height. I think I'm average height, 5'8". I got it right here in the middle. Okay, so but all you do is you give this a little twist right here and it pulls the little thing and there you go. So you can go if you're a little bit shorter, average height, and if you're a little bit taller. All right, you can also flip the handle all the way over and store it. So that's pretty cool. Um, now you got to watch out. Because now you're pulling the pull cord. And just flick it back, flick it back, and it locks into place. I like it in the middle. Right there. That's the height I like. So that, that's pretty neat. All right, that, that's, a, that's a pretty cool feature. Uh, it's real quick and easy. You don't have to undo bolts. There's no big knobs to lose or anything like that. Do um, you ever have one where they have those red knobs? and then the plastic wears out, and then the knob falls off, and then you have the bolt. 
So this uh, eliminates that. So that's that's kind of that's a cool uh, feature right there. I like that. Um, but we're gonna go ahead and put this bag to the test. This is a 2.5 bushel bag. So that's a pretty big bag. Uh, a lot of machines will have like a 1.5, 1.8, 1.9, 2.0. This is a 2.5 bushel bag. That's a lot. Uh, so we're going to do a homeowner vacuum job right now on this client. I'm sorry, on this client. Um, <laughs> client. On this client's yard. Now this yard's gone about five weeks since we cut it and it's summer. So it's a mess. So I edged it and I weed eated it. I want to blow it all in and everything's going to be in the yard. And it's got some really tall spots. It's got some crap. It's going to have a lot of debris that we have to clean up. So we're going to clean it up with the bag. And so we're going to put it on about half mulch, half bag. And we're just going to go ahead and see what we can do as a homeowner. Not in a rush. We're going to, we're going to fill up a bag and see how far we can get with a 2.5 bushel bag before we have to stop. And um, that, you know, I'm going to tell you right now that a con about a big old bag like this is it'll start bouncing your front wheels. Okay, so when you have a heavy bag back here, it'll slow your mower down and it'll start bouncing your front wheels. So filling this bag is not necessarily the best thing to do. Um, but let's see what we can get done. So we're gonna blow all this stuff in and then we're gonna go ahead and mow. And we got a pretty good mess. We got a lot of long stuff sitting here. You see, that's spread out all over. We got some oak leaves right there, or oak leaves. Uh, I don't know if we'll do anything with this mud. Pack some mud. Uh, it's not really going to do anything. Um, but that was from the edges. But you see we got debris and stuff in the yard. We got some leaves and stuff. Dead leaves and branches up here. We're going to vacuum this whole yard up with that mower. So we're partly mulching, partly bagging, running the machine out onto the concrete, and it doesn't even look like we really need to even blow off again. It's a pretty darn good job, guys. Excellent vacuum ability. Large bag. Never stop to empty the bag. So for you guys that are into bagging your yard, collecting all the uh, clippings, maybe wanting to use it for a compost or something, the video don't lie. We went over mulching and we went over bagging and we went over mulching and bagging together. But what I haven't showed you guys yet is its ability to rear discharge the clippings. And if you notice right here, it's open. Okay. So if you put that on bag and not attach the bag, the clippings are going to come flying out of the bottom here. I'm not sure yet if I like that for any reason then other than you're cutting some really, really wet, nasty stuff and you just need to get through it and get the clippings 
out of the deck so the blade will keep spinning. And you don't want to bag it because it's too heavy. You can't mulch it because it's too thick and too wet. So you just want to chop it down and maybe rake it up or chop it down and then maybe bag it up, kind of like what we did with the mulching at the first yard. We mulched it first and then we cleaned up the clippings um, by bagging. I don't know. Um, that's probably an option, but I'm going to show you guys how it works. And I'm going to say that I have not found a purpose for it for me. And I think Honda did it to give you a discharge option. But they couldn't do a side discharge because of the plastic deck. And that might be the con of the plastic deck is they couldn't afford to lose the integrity of the deck by making an opening there. They had to have it completely rounded and, and completely um, strengthened and fortified with its rib mark, you know, its ribbing and stuff like that that's underneath there. If they cut that and they put a side discharge there, then you might have flexing in the deck. So that's probably why they did this, and, it's, and they did it to give you the option to discharge. I could be wrong, but my engineering skills and years of experience uh, tells me that that's why they did this, and kudos for them for doing it. Uh, it leaves themselves open to criticism that the rear discharge sucks, but it's up to you to find the purpose for it. I haven't yet, but the fact that it's there is a pro to me. It's not a con that it's not workable. It's a pro that it's there. And if you ever need to get through really thick, wet stuff, maybe you break your ankle or something and you can't mow for six or eight weeks, I don't know, and then you wanna get out there and cut it down, the rear discharge would probably be a great option. So I'm gonna show you guys how that works and you can just see it coming out of the deck maybe and uh, see what happens. Let me show you the results and this is the part where everybody's gonna knock the mower you got clippings galore I mean you got you got them all over not here because this was thin but look up here by the house where it was a little thick and wet you can't leave this you know that's a failure if you do so the rear discharge will get you through some thick stuff but because it's not side discharging, you can't, you can't continue chopping it up into nothing like a side discharge. A side discharge would be better. Um, but I don't think it's possible with the composite deck. So what I'm going to do now is put it on mulch and go back over it and we'll be done. Alright guys, I uh, got some lunch, cleaned up a little bit and cooled off a little bit. And so now we're on our last two yards of our side hustle, which is my yard and my neighbor's yard. So. We're working on a $200 day of side hustle with the Honda mower and you guys know the charity efforts that I go through. If not, I'll link to it up here and it explains I actually don't receive any money for my side hustle work. It all goes to St. Jude, um, the Children's Research Hospital. But I owe you guys some more uh, topics here. We're going to talk about the seven position uh, wheel adjusters, the ball bearing wheels, the actual cut height of what it says in comparison to what it is actually doing and we'll measure that with a, uh, a straight edge and we're gonna demo this mower uh, the power of the motor <laughs> the motor so my neighbor's yard has not been done in two weeks today and we've had rain just about every day so her yard is gonna be a bear my yard was done last week so it shouldn't be too bad to do uh, but my yard grows pretty thick and her yard grows really thick so first Let's finish up this review. Let's talk about the wheels. They advertise that they are uh, sealed bearing wheels and I did take one apart and they are sealed bearings and I did that on my maintenance video. So if you guys haven't checked that out again, um, 
I'll put the link in the description of this video where we go through everything. So you got sealed bearings in all of these, which is really nice. No prrr or anything like that. Bushing the bushing. Okay, really nice. All those little things like that really make a difference when you're mowing because it gives you a nice straight cut. Um, also, you got your fuel shut off right here. So when you're done mowing, you can shut your fuel off and you're not going to have fuel pressurizing your, your carburetor when it's hot in your garage and everything starts to get pressurized and it starts to push fuel past the needle and seat and overflows. Next thing you know, you got fuel in your garage and it stinks. So you can shut your fuel off right there and then it'll stay in the tank. It's not going to pressurize and go out, okay, because that's, you know, this is sealed here. Uh, so the fuel shut off is really nice. Also good for maintenance. Whenever you got maintenance you're doing, it's good to be able to shut the fuel off and then run the machine out of gas. Uh, and then you could tip it on its side and stuff like that and do the things that you need to do. The seven position um, adjusters on each wheel is independent on each wheel, okay? It's like old school. Some mowers are like my Troy built was one lever did the whole machine. I don't really like that too much because then you can't get different angled heights and there's reasons why you want to change deck heights and stuff like that. So kudos to Honda for making it independent. Um, but they could have put a straight axle with one to adjust the front wheels and then one in the back. Maybe one in the back. That one lever did both, both back wheels and one lever in the front did both front wheels. I think that's petty. Um, you don't change the height of your mower very often in the day. For a homeowner, you'll never change the height of your mower. I mean, once you find the height you want, it's the height you're usually going to cut at. Um, you know, except for exceptions with like excessive rain or something like that but it's not something you do 10 times a day where you where it's gonna you know be a problem um, so I like the fact that you do have the independent wheel adjusters I think that's a good thing um, it goes from three quarter inch which is basically golf course all the way up to four inch which is um, really taller than, than anything you'd ever really need according to the Pennington grass measure um, Pennington grass height chart uh the highest i think the highest grass is uh centipede and saint augustine and it's like three inches to three and a half inches is like the highest you want to mow it now if you have excessive heat or drought or something like that a little bit taller blade is good because it keeps some keeps moisture in the blade and it keeps moisture on the ground instead of golf coursing it in the sun beating the crap out of the roots of the, of the ground there you know the, the grass so um some people like to cut it way high and that's cool too um but according to their chart Pennington Grass Company at Pennington.com uh, centipede should be cut at like uh, I think it said uh, two and a half to three I think I can't remember we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna cut my yard at three inches and then we're gonna cut my neighbor's yard at three inches and first we're gonna see if it's accurate so we're gonna do a pass at three inches and then we're gonna measure the grass blade and we're gonna see how much we're taking off and actual how low is the grass okay and then uh, we'll see how accurate that is for you guys and then, at the end, we're going to power through Carolyn's yard next door that hasn't been cut in two weeks. And that's going to finish up our review, and I'll give you our final thoughts. I think you know where I'm headed with this mower, guys. Uh, so let's go ahead, let's get started. Let's do a pass over there um, and check it at three, three inches according to the mower, and let's see what it says with the ruler. Okay, so I did a pass with uh, what the mower says is three inches. So we'll check this out. That looks pretty darn close to three inches. What do you think? I mean, that's hitting ground. That's pretty accurate. <laughs> I mean, that's right at three inches. Let me try this way with the sun behind you. Yeah, I'll have to give them props on that. That's pretty darn close to three inches right there. And we're taking off well, about an inch and a half, two inches. So we're taking off about two inches, bringing it down to three. So uh, five inch grass, bringing it down to three. Uh, that's, that's pretty much within tolerance. If it was six inches and we we're bringing it down to four, uh, then that would be your, your one third rule for cutting the, the, the right amount of, of lawn, you know, cutting it down the right size. Um, that's pretty darn close. So five to three, six to four, 
can't complain. So let's go ahead and mow this at three. Let you guys check that out. So at three inches, um, we're taking off about two inches, and it's a little thick. It's wet, it's healthy. Well, it's not wet like it rained, but it's moist, healthy grass. So I want you to see it from this side. That looks really nice. That is really, really nice. All right, let me walk backwards because of the sun. <clears throat> so what I'm going to do at this point is I'm going to open the chute up for the rear discharge so that way uh, it's not it's not going to leave any clippings and I can do it in one pass but I'm going to put the, the grass collector on the bag and a little bit will go in the bag we should be able to get mostly through with my front yard then we'll be back to do a power test. That just looks so good. It's so clean, so smooth. Uh, three inches of good, good height for my yard. Um, and that's right at the height requirement for centipede grass, you know, for a healthy cut, supposedly. Um, but you know, research that on your own. That's what Pennington says. So I'm gonna go ahead and give the cut quality, those micro blades, the uh, height adjusters, the smoothness of the wheels, all that wraps into this quality cut and it really looks good. So let me go ahead and pack it in as this storm comes and we'll go ahead and we'll do Carolyn's. We'll do the power test in Carolyn's yard either in a little while when it blows through but it's already six at night um, or we'll just do it tomorrow morning. I'll just take a break from edits. All right, to be continued. All right guys, it's definitely the next day. <laughs> it, uh, it, it rained pretty good yesterday so I wasn't able to get the, uh, the power test done. So now here we are, we're at Carolyn's yard and we're going to go ahead and do the power test. We're keeping it at three inches, just the same as we did yesterday through my yard. And with my yard, we were taking off 
about two inches of grass. Here we're going to be taking off about three to three and a half inches of grass. Uh, we're going to take it down. We're going to really test this GCV 190 Honda motor. All right, so this thing is 186 cc's, and I believe the website, I think Mower's direct website, said this thing was like 8.9 or 8.7 foot pounds of torque. Somebody wrote a comment and said that the torque was 8.1. Um, I looked on Honda's website and I didn't see quickly. I didn't. I wasn't able to see what they had this rated as. Um, so you can do your own research, but it's going to be somewhere in the eights, and that's pretty darn good. That's a that's a pretty torquey motor for a 21 inch blade. Uh, so that's something to really think about. And when you're going to put it to the test here, we're going to do half mulch, half bag. And what we're going to do is we're going to pay attention to the cut quality and we're going to pay attention to, you know, trying to go through thick grass like this, even bagging, it'll clump up on you. It's nice. It's moist. It's been raining all week. The blades are full of water. You know, everything's, everything's just working against this machine, working against any machine to be able to just breeze through it. All right. When you're talking about a 21 inch class of motor or of mower. So pay attention to me and how hard I'm working, if I'm lifting the front wheels, if I have to keep stopping, you know, giving the, uh, the, the mower a chance to catch up, uh, the power to catch up, to push the clippings through. Like I said, we're going to do mulch and bag, which is one of the options this mower gives you, and we're going to use that option so I can demonstrate this mower getting through this thick, tall grass, and we'll see how it works out. This is the final step in our review process. Uh, it's going to be just a power test. I'm not going to speed it up. Just listen to the engine and we'll do a few passes. I'll let you listen and then we'll go ahead and uh, finish her yard up real quick and finish up this review. quick bagging, um, sucks it up, mulches it at the same time, does a great job. Now what we're going to do is we'll do a couple passes with the rear discharge and we'll, we'll see how that works in the thicker grass and then we'll mulch that up and we'll see how that final job looks um, and we'll just take it from there. So now what we're going to do is we're going to shut it to all mulch and we'll clean it up. Putting the sun on the other side shows you the clippings much better this way. So let's, let me show you how it cleans it up mulching.
few passes only mulching uh, and then we'll go back over the clippings that will be left on the grass because it's just too thick it's just too moist in order to do it and it, that's any mower so I'm not going to fault the Honda for what you're going to see but I just want you guys now to wrap this whole one hour review up to show all the different ways this mower can be used and if it will work for you. It's really not leaving clippings. The moist grass, nice and thick, it's doing a really good job of processing the clippings and uh, depositing below the level of the grass blade. I'm quite impressed actually. I was not expecting that. I thought I was going to have a mess and I don't. I'm going to continue mulching because that is my preferred method of mowing. My last point, some people would leave this little bit of clippings here where it really got thick. They'd leave that. They might hit it with the blower. Homeowners might just leave it and call it good. Commercial guys might just hit it with the blower. Um, and then there's some people like me that does, just thinks that's unsightly. And so what I want to do is I'm just going to run over it now faster from here to here and just clean it up and then we powered through this.
that mower did a fantastic job. All right, so we're done with our review. I mean, the finished product, I just I kind of wanted to stand in, in here and, and just remind you guys what we just finished with. Some nice thick grass back there, uh, nice and moist, and that machine really just powered through. But from the start of this video to an hour later, a little over an hour later, we tested every feature that Honda wants you to like. And we went through them step by step, and I demonstrated it in real life, in real time, with no edits. And if it sucked, I would have told you. And if, if it was great, I wanted you to see it for yourself. So we powered through some, some tall stuff, some thick stuff. We vacuumed up a yard. It's got a big bag. It's smooth. It's a heavy machine, but that gives you a really smooth cut. So for every con that people can say, you know, I can turn around and say, yeah, but that makes it a pro, actually, because people will say it's a con that it has a rear discharge and doesn't make sense. Well, I say that's a pro because it gives you an option to rear discharge if it's really, really, really thick stuff. Uh, if it's not, then bag it or just mulch it or bag and mulch at the same time. So there's so many options that you can do. So I want it to be non-biased. I'm not endorsed by Honda or by any lawn mowing company. I'm not paid by Honda or any lawn mowing company or any company for that matter. So I just wanted you guys to have the ability to watch the machine work and go through each of the features. And if I could find a con, then we went through and we kind of worked around it and we explained how we can make that con a pro and make that machine really versatile and it is called the Versamo for a reason I'm gonna have to give that machine two big thumbs up and you know I paid just under six hundred dollars for it if I paid full retail and I didn't get the hundred dollars off like I had mentioned at the beginning and I had to pay 649 plus tax which would have brought it to about 700 uh, I still wouldn't have felt bad awesome machine worth every penny MSRP is $6.99. Find them local at your retailer for about uh, $6.49. And, you know, be very careful if you're shopping big box stores compared to a Honda dealer. Make sure you're getting that motor like mine, the, GV, the GCV 190. Okay. Uh, they also have Honda mowers that have like the 160cc. So this is a big boy 190, or it's 186cc, but it's the 190 with the Versamo select knob and all that. So if you go to a big box store, be very, very careful what Honda you purchase. All right, this is, again, the Honda HRX 217 VKA. Very important. Two big, huge thumbs up on this machine. Worth every penny. If you got one and maybe I helped you get around some obstacles that you were having with it, maybe uh, you, can, you can say, hey, thanks, Dan. I really appreciate it. You, uh, you just explained something I didn't know. And if you're in the market for a machine and you can spend up to about 700 bucks, get it. You just watched an hour long video and we did everything with it. Bad to the bone. Uh, definitely would purchase that machine again. All right, I hope this helps you guys out. I know it's a long video, but it's meant to be. If you don't like long videos.